Well State Park sits on Green Bay. Yes, that Green Bay, of Packers territory. We're that close to Wisconsin, so all you Packers fans out here, this would probably be the park for you. Welcome to Wells State Park. Wells State Park is in a location where people really get thrown off trying to figure out the geography because of the way Michigan is shaped. So we are in the center of the Upper Peninsula, but on the southern tip. And we're down here. If you go, and we're, we're sitting on Green Bay. So if you go south down the coastline, you end up in Green Bay, Wisconsin. If you go east across the bay, you end up in Lake Michigan. And if you continue across Lake Michigan, you actually end up on the west side of the lower peninsula of Michigan. Got that? <laughs> we'll put a map up. <laughs> I can't do that in my hand, sorry. <laughs> it's just one of those strange things with the way Michigan is shaped with both peninsulas and where we're at at various times. It's sort of like how you can go south to Canada. <laughs> From Michigan, yes, you can go south to Canada. A lot of people don't realize that. Uh, but Wells State Park is, it's a nice little park right on yeah, the bay. Yeah, it's cute. There isn't a whole lot here. I mean, it's a campground and a day use area. And some a few miles of trails. And if there's a state harbor located nearby, so that would be where the boat launch would be if you have a boat, which we did notice a few people in the campground had them. So that is an option here. Pretty nice campground. I liked it. Um, not a lot of privacy, but the sites are good size. We have some good size rigs in there. Um, some really nice views. Oh yeah, the sites that are right along the water. Um, I'm assuming those would probably be in the reserve like six months in advance list because they're, they do have a really nice gorgeous view. I, I do kind of want to note though, there are some really nice overlooks that they've left un, um, they've left without a campsite and they just have a couple of park benches sitting there. So the most gorgeous views are open to anybody staying at the campground, not just for one person, whoever happened to have that campsite. Mm -hmm. You can just walk up and, you know, there's benches there or just stand there and look at it. Uh, you mentioned that the, the six months out and reserving those sites, that's probably a good idea. What I noticed about this campground though that I really like is there was a large number of sites that were non-reservable. Um, and I think we're seeing that a little bit more in the UP, but that's really nice because we found traveling through the UP, schedules don't always work. Like you don't always know how long it's gonna take you to get from one spot to the other. So being able to find a campground that isn't 100% reservable and booked up is kind of nice. It is, especially because not only do you not know how long it's going to take you, but there's just really cool things to see in the UP that you're driving along. And you're like, oh, we should stop and see that. And you get detoured very easily. And then you end up taking a lot more time than you expected because there's just a lot to see up here. Not only just sort of some of the kitschy touristy trap things like the Snowmobile Museum, um, but some gorgeous waterfalls and other scenic sites and pullouts. So you always want to just plan more time in the UP, no matter when and what you're up here for. And that's not meant as a dig on the snowmobile museum. We didn't actually go there, but one of the park rangers we talked to said, if you get a chance, you really should go through it. The guys apparently put together quite an impressive yeah. collection. Yeah, you know, I, I was serious. Like, stop at the snowmobile museum. <laughs> the other thing about the campground is I was surprised about the number of sites that are up to 50 amp. Oh, like half the campground. So at least half the campground has been upgraded to 50 amp, which is really nice. And they have good sized sites. So people with larger rigs have the power they need to have the space they need. So uh, I thought that was really nice. Um, the other thing, too, is I think we read the, the campground is actually where the original CCC camp was. Yes, this is another park that was essentially built and influenced by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the 30s and 40s. So their original camp was here and they worked in the rest of the area. It wasn't specifically to build this park, but they helped replant trees, uh, do bro uh, build roads, bridges, sewer systems, that kind of thing. And then when they were all done, then they also helped build the state park here. So there's a couple lodges and some buildings and different infrastructure that they helped create and uh, help make the park what it is today. One of the stone shelters that's here was built by the CCC. So that's really cool. You can see it from that era, it would've been the 30s, 40s. This park actually started in the 20s. It was one of the early ones. Yeah, 1925. And similar to many of the other state parks in Michigan, the land was originally owned by a lumber baron, J.W. Wells. And he, what was interesting was he was the mayor of Menominee, which is a little bit south of here, for three terms beginning in 1839. So one of the original settlers up here, one of the original pioneers in this area, helped sort of shape what it is. And then eventually, after he died, his family turned the land over to the state of Michigan. 
it's really nice that we have this land because of that. I always find it ironic that it's sort of the lumber families <laughs> that ended up saving state park land for us. But uh, so in addition to the campground that's here, there's also uh, quite a few rustic cabins that are available. And there is a lodge here, a historic lodge that they consider modern because of it's because been of the amenities and it. it has, you know, running water, sink, stove, that kind of thing. Whereas the rustic cabins are truly just cabins. There's a couple beds and um, but you have to bring all your own linens, cookware. There's uh, only vault toilets available and a hand pump. So that's sort of the definition between rustic and modern. Uh, so even though the lodge is old, it is been considered modern from a amenity standpoint. And that sleeps 12, I think it said. So get your family or a group together and you could really enjoy that staying at the lodge yeah. and then come out here and enjoy. There is a day use area, good size parking area in the day use area and a nice beach on Green Bay. I think the beach must be a lot smaller now than it used to be, it seems like. With the water table, yes, but there's a really nice ADA accessible uh, ramp, uh, cement sort of steps and ramps. And at first I have to say, I, I was like, why would they build this? Why would they build steps? It's not ADA accessible. And then we realized it actually curves around sort of like in a snail shape. So it is actually very much handicap accessible because you can take your wheelchair or your stroller down and then go around and it ends right into the sand. So that's really nice actually. But I do feel that the sand may have extended a little bit further out at some point because now the water is almost right up to the end of the steps. And I don't think that's probably not how they originally built it. Speaking of ADA, I noticed there were several sites in the campground that are considered ADA, so they're paved. Most of the sites in the campground, though, are grass. Yeah, quite a bit of grass. And I did notice there were a few that had some muddy tire tracks in them. And I don't know if it has rained here recently, um, but some of the larger rigs, I think, have a tendency when it's just grass and not any gravel or anything to sink down a little bit. So make sure you bring leveling blocks or wood or chalks or whatever you have just to make sure that your rig doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, and I would be more, the leveling blocks, I would say more for not sinking in. The sites themselves seem pretty level, so that looked good too. They've done a really good job here at Wells State Park, keeping everything up. They've got a really nice sandy beach. Uh, the campground is in good condition. The shelter here is some, has something that I really enjoy seeing, which is a separate section in the bathrooms of just changing stations so that you don't have to try to change your clothes to your bathing suit in the bathroom stall. And you don't have to do it before you come either. You, you've got that here. And so I like to see that. I don't see that at every park. And that's a nice feature that they added here to the beach house. The, the other thing I was going to say in terms of amenities that you found, of course, was the big playscape. Oh, that's the, right. The campground has a really modern, nice playscape. <laughs> Yes, it's actually even featured on the front of the brochure. So uh, they've put a lot of work into it. I have a feeling that's probably, they have a friends group that's probably been instrumental in doing that. Um, but this is a good park. And whether you're coming up from Wisconsin, headed into the UP, or you're going from the UP back down to Wisconsin, because you're only an hour from Green Bay, the city here, and Escanaba is only maybe if about 30 miles north of here. And those are pretty big towns for this type neck of the woods. Uh, so whether you're headed up or down, this is a good place to stop in between. So keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.